while we wait a minute or two for more people to join, please tell me uh, where are you from and, and what's the weather like there? Uh, what's the weather like where you are right now? Uh, all right, hello everyone. Um, if uh, did you if you hadn't seen me, it uh, looks like I had a little bit of a glitch going live. Um, but good good morning, um, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is tutor or teacher Greg, and um, I am from the United States, and I'm currently in Ohio. Um, all right, I see some people are telling me where they are from. Excellent. Uh, tell me where are you from, and what's the weather like today where you are? What's the weather like here? It is a nice sunny morning. So let's see, we have, uh, oh, from Turkey. Hello, Turkey. All right, um, we see a Romania, wonderful. Hello from Pakistan. Hello, two people from Pakistan, great. Well, let's see, while we wait, where is everyone else from? Where are you from? Vietnam, oh, wonderful. Hello from Poland, hello from Singapore, Yemen. All right, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Sri Lanka. Hello from Japan, and it's rainy. Oh, no. Hello, Russia. All right, hello from Nepal. All right, evening in Nepal. That's great. And some more people from Pakistan. Weather is pretty good today. That's great. All right, uh, Sri Lanka, wonderful. Saudi Arabia, some more from Japan. Oh, it's sunny. That's great. All right, Bangladesh, wonderful. Austin, great. All right, let's see, ooh, some more sunny, that's great. Japan, it's raining as well again. Oh, hello, Azerbaijan. Oh, hello from Syria. All right, ooh, a bit hot in Pakistan, I see. Hot in the evening. All right, uh, Islamabad, all right, hello, it's raining again. Oh, we have some dust in Saudi Arabia. Uh oh, gotta cover your eyes with some dust. Uh, cold in Romania right now. Okay, a little bit of snow. Hello from Sweden and rainy in Sweden, I see. Okay, great. Some more from Pakistan. It's wonderful. All right, great to see you all. Oh, Sri Lanka and it's nighttime. All right. Okay, wonderful. Weather is hot and dry, I see. Okay. All right. Well, it is wonderful to see you all. It looks like we have a uh, a lot of people here, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm really excited to have this uh, lesson with you today. Um, we're doing it all on homonyms. Um, and you have definitely heard homonyms before, but homonyms are a little bit uh, tricky uh, because they, you know, they seem like the same word in a lot of instances. But today, we are going to go through some examples that we can see how and why they are different. Um, so let's first start with a, what is a homonym? Okay, what is a homonym? So a homonym is a group of two or more words that have the same spelling or pronunciation or sometimes both, but they have different meanings. Okay, so these words will sometimes sound the same. They might be spelled the same. They might be spelled the same and sound the same, but they have different meanings. So we have hundreds, if not thousands of homonyms in the English language, but there are a certain number that you will see more. You'll see some homonyms more than you will other homonyms. So we're gonna go through a list today um, of about 30 different homonyms that are more common. Uh, so first, let's talk about the three different types of homonyms. Okay, we have three different types of homonyms. We have homographs, heteronyms, and homophones. Okay, so homographs, heteronyms, and homophones. Now, you will sometimes in uh, different ways that you're studying, see that homographs and heteronyms are combined into one thing, okay? So sometimes you will just see homographs and homophones, but because it's easier to learn when you see a difference between homographs and heteronyms split out, that's how we're going to learn it today. 
But if you are learning this on your own and just reviewing, just know that you might have just homographs and homophones. So don't mix those up, okay? Don't, mix, don't, don't get concerned. So let's go through what they are. Let's start with a homograph, okay? Homographs are words with the same spelling and the same pronunciation, but they are different meanings depending on where they are in the word, okay? So they have the same spelling and same pronunciation. So for example, we can say have lie, okay? We have lie and lie. So I could say don't lie about your age, okay? Don't lie about your age, meaning don't say something uh, that is, you know is false, okay? So a lie here is like something that's false. But I can also say, I want to lie on the couch, okay? I want to lie on the couch. That means like to lay down, right? So those are the two differences in lie, okay? See how they're spelled the same and pronounced the same. So that is a homograph, spelled the same, pronounced the same. Okay, all right, next we're gonna go with a heteronym, okay? A heteronym is a word with the same spelling but different pronunciation and meaning, okay? So we have the same spelling but different pronunciation and meaning, okay? So we have, for example, in this one, tears and tears, okay? Tears and tears, okay? So if I have wipe away your tears, okay? Wipe away your tears, all right? Right, those are the things that come from your, come from your uh, eyes, right? That's tears, okay? So if I have tears, right? That's something in your, like I can have a tear in my jeans or a tear in my shirt, okay? I have so many tears in my jeans. All right, that is what we have, the same spelling, different pronunciation, okay? Same spelling, different pronunciation. And what you will notice, we'll go through some examples, but you'll start to see a little bit of a pattern, okay, within the difference between the pronunciations. So let's start next with our homophones, okay? Homophones, those are words with different spellings but the same pronunciation and different meanings, okay? Different spellings, same pronunciation, different meanings. For example, C and C, okay? So look out the window and tell me what you see, right? So C is like a, a verb, to see. Hmm, what do you see, okay? I love to swim in the sea, okay? That is like the ocean, right? The sea. Okay, so we have two different words pronounced the exact same, but spelled differently. So those are much more difficult, especially when you're conversing and when you're talking, because you can hear someone say, look at the sea. I say, look at the sea, what? Oh, they mean the body of water, right? Not the verb to see. So excellent. All right, so. Now what we can do, we have our three different types. Let's review that real quick. Three different types. We have homographs, okay, homographs, heteronyms, homophones, right? Our three different types. They are all considered homonyms, okay? So now what we can do is let's go through some examples, okay? And I'm gonna move this a little bit closer so you can see it, okay? So here is a list of 30 different types, okay? So let's start with homographs, okay? So homographs, right? Remember, homographs are things that they have the same spelling and the same pronunciation. Okay, so our first one, cool, okay? Cool, well, you've probably heard cool before in many different types of situations. Cool can be an adjective, a verb, or an adverb. Okay, so if we look at what cool can mean, right, as an adjective, we can say the open window makes the room cool, 
right? That's temperature. It's cool, right? So if you said it was cool in where you are right now in the world, right? That's cool temperature wise. I can also say I need to look, I need to cool the food, right? That's a verb to cool. I need to make the food more cold, right? I need the temperature to lower. That's to cool the food. Or we can use this as an adverb and say, those pants look cool. So you've probably heard that. That's much more of a slang, right? Those pants look cool. So we have temperature, right, for cool. And we have like, looking cool, looking cool. Yeah, exactly. I like your hairstyle. It looks so cool. That is one way to use cool. Excellent. So see the difference there, right? We have the same pronunciation and the same spelling, but different meanings, okay? So let's look at another one. Fair, okay? Fair, all right? A fair can be an adjective or a noun. Now, it can also be an adverb and a verb, but those are much less common. So we're gonna focus on the adjective and the noun meaning of fair, okay? So for our adjective, right? We have everyone deserves a fair trial, okay? Everyone deserves a fair trial. So fair at this point, right? Fair means that it's something that's justice, right? Justified, right? A fair trial is when someone says, okay, I want to look at all of the facts and I'm going to just make a decision that is fair, right? Now, the noun of fair, right, is an actual event. I love going to the county fair. Good. I see I love going to the book fair, right? We have different kinds of fairs, okay? Good. So these are the two different fairs, right? We have fair as in a sense of justice, right? An adjective. And we have fair as a noun, okay? Good. To be fair, right? Okay. So if we're going to be fair, right, you're going to have the same type of adjective here, fair. Okay. So next... Let's take a look at fan, okay, right, fan. So a fan, we can have two different types of nouns or we could have a verb, okay? So two different types of nouns with fan or a verb. So you've probably heard of a couple of these fans before, right? So the first fan, right, is a fan who cheers for games, okay, right? We say it's a fan, right? So all the all of the fans are at the game, right? All of the fans are at a game, okay? So that means that you cheer for someone or you cheer for something, okay? So we have, or the second noun meaning, the fan is cooling down the room, okay? The fan is cooling down the room. So that means like the fan is... Right? The fan that actually makes you cool. Exactly, exactly. So we're seeing that's two different types of nouns that are fans, okay? Good, good. And you see here, remember I noted I used cooling, right? Remember cool, this is the verb version of cool. The verb version. All right. And now we have our verb for fan. Will you fan the soup? It is hot, right? So you know when you fan your soup, you're taking it and you're blowing on the soup? That can be fanning the soup, okay? So our three types of fans. Very good. Okay, so next we can have leaves, okay? So for leaves, we have both a noun and a verb, right? A noun and a verb for leaves. So our noun, right? These are the things that fall from the sky, right? Or fall off of trees. Fall off of trees are leaves, right? He likes to rake the leaves, right? So these leaves are ones that fall off of a tree. But we could also say it is as a verb. It is cold out when he leaves the party, right? It is cold out when he leaves the party, okay? So that are two different types of leaves, right? We have a noun and a verb, okay? So 
Remember, these are all homographs, okay? And all of these homographs are the same sound and the same pronunciation, but different meanings. Okay, so next we can go on left, okay? Left, all right? So you've probably heard this one a lot, right? Well, we can have an adjective, a noun, or a verb, okay? Left, and remember, we kind of have, we already saw the verb version of left because it is the present tense of leave, right? Leave, the past tense is left. So let's take a look. So for our adjective, right, this is talking about a specific uh, type of um, directional, right? So uh, raise your left hand, okay? Raise your left hand. Right? This is an adjective. It's describing which hand you're using, right? Your left hand. If I say, oh, could you grab me um, the spice on the left, right? Okay. So, but we can also have a noun that's very similar, talking about the directional. Okay. So we have the box is on the left side of the room, right? Left side of the room is the noun version. Okay. And we could also use it as the verb. I left the party early right? That's the verb, to leave. I left the party. Good. We have lots of food left. That's the noun version. Very, very good. Okay. Very good. All right. So these are the three different types of left. Okay. So let's go next to uh, pupil. All right. Pupil is two different types of nouns. Okay. Two different types of nouns in pupil. All right. So our first one, pupil, we have his pupils are small right now. Our pupil is in our eye, okay? In our actual eye, that dark part of your eye is your pupil, okay? Also, all of you learning English are pupils. That is someone who is learning. The pupils are in their seats. That's someone like a student is a pupil. So we have our eye. And we have a student, both nouns, both pupils, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at right, right? Very similar to left, right? We have our left and we have our right, okay? So our right can be an adjective, it can be a noun, it can be an adverb or a verb, but we, those aren't as common. So we'll focus on adjective and noun, okay? And remember, R-I-G-H-T is different than the verb to write, okay? That's a W, so that would be different. So let's look at write, R-I-G-H-T. We have true, or turn right at the sign, right? That's the adjective, turn right at the sign, okay? Or we have the noun, she has a right, right? She has a right, to speak her mind, okay? So this right, the adjective right, right? That's the direction, turn right. This right, right? This is something that everyone is allowed, like, right? Like human rights, right? Or we have the, uh, um, the right to, uh, to talk, right? Yeah, those are, that is, so that right, you are absolutely right. That is like correct, right? You are correct. That's another type of right. Very good. So you're seeing with these homographs, there's a lot of different meanings you can have with the same one word, okay? Right, copyright. So copyrights, that's another noun, right? That's the that's a type of right, like, uh, like liberty, right? That's a right. Okay, so next let's look at scale, okay, scale. So scale can be a verb and scale can be a noun. Okay, a verb or a noun. So as the verb, right, scale means to climb something, to go all the way up something. So if I say he scaled the wall, that means he scaled, he climbed up the whole wall. Okay, he scaled the wall. If I say a scale as in the noun, we can say I stepped on the scale to weigh myself right? You use a scale to weigh something. So those are the two difference, right? Scale as in the verb 
and scale as in stepping on something, how much does it weigh? That is a, two different types of scales, okay? Scale and scale, okay? And you could also have a scale like on a fish, right? Like, ah, look at all the scales on the fish. Okay, but those are different types of nouns. Okay, so now let's look at sign, okay? Sign, that's a very common word you see a lot, but there's two different types of signs, okay? We have a verb sign, and we have a noun sign, okay? So our verb sign, right, means to literally to sign, okay? So if I say they need to sign the contract, okay? They need to sign the contract. You are signing, sign the contract. Very good. Or if I say follow the signs to my house, right? Follow the signs to my house, that means an actual physical Sign, a physical sign, that is what you actually see, right? That's the noun. So we have sign, verb, physical sign to see. Okay, very good. All right, so let's two more on our homographs. We have type, okay? Type, we have a noun and a verb, okay? So we have this kind of type, okay? So for our noun, right? I just typed a letter. Okay, so that is a verb, right? To type, I just typed a letter, that's our verb. Okay, I have the noun, type meaning like a descriptor, right? So seafood is not my favorite type of food. So we could have a type of food, that's the noun. You could have a type of music, that's a noun. Very good, type of music, type of food, very good. Or the verb to type, right? I type on my computer. Very good, very good. Okay, so our last homograph, okay? We have watch, okay? So with watch, there's a couple of different meanings. We have verb meanings and we have noun meanings, okay? So this type of watch, right? So for our verb, so please watch the door for our guests, all right? So that means to watch, right? To look out for, Right, that's the verb to watch. Ah, oh, good, I also see I love my Apple Watch, okay? Good, so that, that is the noun version, right? He liked, um, he looked at his watch for the first time, okay? He looked at his watch for the time. That is an actual watch. What you can do, remember, you could watch your watch, right? To see what time it, oh, I, I need to watch my watch, right? That's the, the two different meanings with the same word. Very good, very good. Okay, so now that we have homographs, let's try this out real quick. So if I say, hmm, I want you to write a sentence for me using leaves, okay? Using leaves as a noun, okay? Can you use leaves as a noun? Go ahead and type a sentence using leaves. Let's see, leaves as a noun. Hmm, if we have leaves as a noun, remember, if it's a noun, right, it's going to be something that we are uh, looking at or doing, right, it's a noun. All right, good, leaves fall in autumn. Excellent, that's the noun, right? Leaves fall in autumn. Very good, very good. Green leaves, good. In autumn, leaves are always colorful. Excellent, the leaves fell off the tree. Very good. Okay, so be careful. Remember, leaves as a noun, we can't use that as she leaves the house, right? Or uh, I, um, uh, he, uh, he, he wants, uh, they all um, leave, right? So remember, it's the noun, very good. Leaves get brown, excellent, excellent. I put leaves of mint with tea, good. Remember in English, we would use the um, adjective first. So I put mint leaves in my tea, very good, very good. Okay, so that is the noun version of leaf, very good. Okay, now let's move on to heteronyms, okay? Heteronyms are difficult because they 
are the exact same spelling, but they sound different, okay? So let's look at the first one, okay? And I want to say that this is an American English pronunciation of these words, okay? So depending on the type of English you're speaking, it might be pronounced a little differently. But this is the American English pronunciation, okay? So the first one, we have address, okay? Address as the noun and address is the verb, okay? So address, noun, address, verb, okay? So if I use it as the noun, I would say, can you give me, um, can you give me your address to the restaurant? Can you give me the address to the restaurant? Okay. Versus the verb, she will address the audience. Okay. So you see where the stress is on the verb, it's a. Uh. She will address the audience. That's the verb. Versus, can you give me the address to the restaurant? Okay, so there's the two different types of address and address. So let's look at the next one, okay? C-L-O-S-E, all right? We have close and close, okay? Close and close. So close is the verb to close and close being an adjective. Okay, so... If I have close, right, please close the door, right? Close the door. But if I'm using the adjective, I would say the pool is close by. All right, see that close versus close. So the z is a verb. The z is a verb. The s is the adjective. The pool is close. Please close the door. Very good. See, these are the, the slight differences, right? Address, address. Close, close. Very good. Good. Okay. So the next we have C-O-N-S-O-L-E. That's either console or console. All right. So we have the noun console or the verb console, right? Console, console, okay? So, the noun console, okay? So if we say, my new console has four controllers, right? A console here is like a video game, right? A console, okay? Or you can say console, right? It's the verb, so we can even use past tense, right? She consoled him when he got a bad grade. Good. She consoled him when he got a bad grade. Good. So, console, console. So remember, uh, oh, I spelled controllers wrong, I see. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, excellent work, excellent work, okay. So, we have console and console. Very good. Okay, so, um, those are our two different types of console and console, okay? So our next one, we have contest and contest, okay? Contest, noun, contest, verb. So if you start to notice, right, when we have a verb, right, we're going to stress the beginning part of the word, right? Contest, contest, right? Console console, right? So the verb is generally going to be stressed harder at the beginning of the word, okay? So let's look at contest more or contest. So the verb or the noun contest, right? We could say they will have a contest to see who can eat the most, okay? They will have a contest, right? An actual uh, action, right? A contest to see who can eat the most, okay? Or we can contest something as a verb, meaning that you think something is wrong, right? That's to contest, right? So that he will contest the election, okay? That means that he is going to fight it, 
because he believes that it is wrong, right? That is to contest versus a contest, right? I see the contest will start soon. Very good. That's the contest as in the actual, uh, something that, some sort of event that's happening. That's a contest, right? Me against someone else. That's a contest. But contest means that you are going to believe that it is wrong. Okay, you're going to fight something. That's to contest it, to fight it. Okay, so next we have either, this one's difficult. We have converse and converse, okay? So if I say converse, right, versus converse, the converse, right, is the verb, right? Because we're stressing the beginning of that. We are stressing the beginning of the sentence, or of the word converse, versus converse, right, is the noun. Okay, so let's look at a sentence, okay? So if I'm using converse, right, the noun, right, the scientist in the mountains believe the world was round, but the man on the beach believed the converse, okay? The converse, those are two different types, right? Believe the opposite. So the noun is like the opposite, believe the converse, okay? We also have a noun like the type of shoe, right? So we have converse shoes. That's also another type, okay? So we have converse, right, and converse. That's like to talk, to talk, right? I like to converse with new people, right? That's like, like a conversation. I like to converse. Very good, very good. So we have converse and converse. And notice the verb has a stress at the beginning, right? Converse. Good. Okay. So next we have live or live, okay? So we have live and live. So li, i, that is the verb, right? Stress at the beginning. Live. Or we have live. Okay. So, and that can be either an adjective or an adverb with live. Okay. Live and live. Okay. So, with the verb, right? It is nice to live a happy life. That's the verb. So it's to live, right? To live a happy life. Okay. So if we have a to before, we always know it's going to be pronounced live. Okay. But this game is live, right? Exactly. On air. To be on air is live. Exactly. Live music. That's perfect. Uh, my video is live. Yes. This, this video is live right now. Okay. So that is live. Okay. Uh, stress the I. Live. Live. It. Very good. Very good. Okay. So next we have perfect. Okay. Perfect or prefect, okay? Perfect or perfect, sorry. Perfect or perfect. So perfect, right? Stressing the beginning is the adjective, perfect. The verb, perfect, okay? So to perfect something or to uh, perfect something, okay? So we have, I want to perfect my English, okay? I want to perfect my English. So that is the verb, right? If you want to perfect your English, right? That is the verb, to perfect. Good. But if something is perfect, right? Like the perfect cup of coffee, or this is the perfect movie, it means that it's the best, right? That's the best. That's the perfect one. It means the best one for you. But to perfect means to make something perfect, right? To make something perfect. Very good. Excellent. So I could even say, I want to perfect my English to make it perfect. Very good, right? That's the different types of perfect and perfect. Okay? Very good. Next, we have present or present. Okay? So present or present. Present. So the noun, present. The adjective, present. Okay? So good. So if I have the noun, perfect, right? Or sorry, the noun, uh, present, right? I could say, 
please present your model of the building. Okay, please present your model of the building. Okay, or I bought you a present for your birthday. So this is the noun right here, right? The noun present. I bought you a present for your birthday. Good, your birthday present, a gift, exactly. That's the noun. The adjective, though, is to do something, right? Please present your uh, the model of your building. Good, that's to present. Good, that's the verb. Good, excellent, excellent. Okay, so next we have two more, right? Two more heteronyms. Remember, there are lots of these, but these are just some very common ones. So next we have record or record. Good, record or record. So record, noun, record, verb. Remember, see the stress is at the beginning of the heart of the of the actual vowel at the beginning, just like most of the verbs, right? Record, right? Record. Remember, console, console, right? Live, live. Good. So it's the beginning, okay? So good. I see some people have someone's on there to record one's voice. Very good. To break a record. Yes, exactly. So let's look at this one. He broke the school record, right? That's the verb. He broke the school, or sorry, the record, that's the noun. He broke the record. Or you can play a record. Very good. You can play a record. Or you can break a record, right? So a record is either like a uh, um, something that no one else has done, right? That's a record. If I run the fastest, I have the record, okay? Or I can play a physical, right? It's like a big circle that plays music. That's a record. Or we have the verb to record. I want to record a new song. Okay? I want to record a new song. So that is the verb. Record, record. Very good. Very good. Okay. And our last one. We have use and use. Okay? Use, use. So if you notice... When we have the z sounds, that's often the verb, use, or we have use for the noun, okay? So if I say, can I use your phone, okay? Can I use your phone? Versus, we have no use for a crib, okay? Use as in to, uh, I want to physically use it, right? I want to use your phone and talk on it, or I have no use for it, right? I have no use for it, I, I can't use it, right? Very good, good. Or I have a use for it, that's the actual noun version of it. Good, use, verb, use, noun. Excellent, okay. Oh, I see, what does a crib mean? A crib is where a baby sleeps, right? A small little, a small little bed for a baby is a crib. Okay, very good. All right, so these are all of our, well, not all of them. These are a lot of heteronyms to take a look at. Remember, heteronyms, they sound, they spelled the same, but they sound different. So let's take a look, let's do a little test, okay? Let's try this out. So if I say, I want you to use clothes, clothes, okay? So if I say, oh, Close. How would you use that? With a Z. Close. Close. Could you use that in a sentence? Close with the pronunciation close. Hmm. Is that a verb or a noun if we're using the Z? Close. Is that a verb or a noun? Good. I'm seeing some answers. Close your computer. Very good. Close your eyes. Yes, if we have that Z, right, that's going to be the verb. Ah, so I see they are close friends. Remember, that is that is the noun, close. But close, I will close the meeting now. Very good. Close the door. Close the window. Excellent. Do you mind closing the window? Excellent. Very good. Okay, very good. So close with the Z, right, that's the verb. So let's try another one. How about if I say, hmm, 
record. If I use record, is that a noun or a verb? Record. Could you use record in a sentence? Record. Record. Hmm. So I'm not stressing the beginning part of this of the word record, right? So what is record? Could you use that in a sentence? Hmm. Record. Good. I'm seeing noun. Yes. Record. So if we have record, that is the noun. Very, very good. Okay, so the match, ha uh, I, so I see we have, I record, right? So record, record versus record. So record is the noun, very good. So record is the noun. Like I broke the record. I want to hear your recording. So that is a different word, but that's very good, that's very good. She set a record with the highest score, excellent. I want to break the previous records playing cricket. Very, very good. So remember, record versus record, right? Because where the stress is on the word record versus record. Very, very good. Okay, let's try one more. If I say use, use, we have that Z at the end, use. What is that? Is that a noun or a verb? Use. Use. Hmm, is that a noun or a verb? Very good. Verb, excellent. Use is the verb. So you have that Z-E ending. Use is the noun. Very good, very good. Use is the verb. Okay. Let's look at our last category here, okay? And I'm gonna move you over so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so here's our last category, okay? We have homophones, okay? These are a little bit difficult because they sound the same, but they're spelled differently, okay? So we have accept and accept, okay? Two different words, accept and accept. So we have accept being our verb and accept our preposition, so right, our verb starts with an A, our preposition or conjunction starts with an E, okay? So, if I say as a verb, please accept this gift, okay? That's to receive, right? It's a verb, to accept, it's a verb, okay? A with a verb. E, I like everything except chicken, right? That's excluding. Right, you're using an excluding thing here, okay? So just remember with this one, and these are confused all of the time, even amongst native English speakers, right? And these are very difficult. These uh, homophones are very difficult and they're always confused. So accept the verb, accept, right? Accept is going to be the preposition or conjunction. They sound the same, but where you use them in the sentence and how they're spelled is the difference, okay? Next, we have effect and effect, okay? The starting with an A again, right, is the verb, effect. Starting with an E is the noun, okay? So we have effect and effect. They sound the same, but they are different. So if I say the rain will affect our plants, right? Okay, so that's to have an impact on. They, the rain will affect our plans. Okay, I could say the effect of the fall was, was a broken arm, right? The effect of the fall was a broken arm, like fell. Oh, I broke my arm. That was the effect. Okay, so remember, it's the, the difference between these two, right, is one, starts with an A, or it starts with an E for the, uh, for the noun, but think about where it is in the sentence, right? So if you're trying to decide between using effect with an A or effect with an E, think about where it is in the sentence, right? If I have will affect, right? Well, I have will, that's gonna start, that's a, a future verb, right? So I'm going to be using another verb here, right? So here, right, the effect, I can't start a sentence without a noun to begin with, right? So just remember where you are in your sentence, it will really help you with using these homophones, okay?
Very, very good. Let's go on to the next one. We have allowed and allowed. Okay? So I have the first one, allowed, right? This is a verb, right? The past tense of the verb, to allow. I have allowed being an adverb, right? To say out loud, okay? So let's take a look real quick. If I have, you are not allowed to speak in the library, right? That's like permission. You are not allowed. Versus, I read the poem aloud, right? That is like audibly. I read it aloud. Very good. So we have the verb up here, right? Past tense of allow. Or we have the um, adverb down here to mean audibly. Very good. Very good. Okay. So next we have break and break. Okay. So we have the noun or verb to break. Okay. Versus the verb or noun break. So the reason why I put it this way is because this break right, is often a noun, and this break is often a verb, okay? So, if I am using this as a noun, okay, I say I need new brakes, right, on my car. Those are actual brakes for my car, right? So, I need new brakes for my car. So, those are the things that actually help you brake, right? They make you stop. Those are the nouns, okay? Or, if I say, oh, no, I didn't mean to break my phone, right? That's to B-R-E-A-K, I break. I, and we have, I see on the, there, broke, right? That's the past tense of the verb, to break. Very good. But remember, you can also, with this break, if, to actually break on your car, that's a verb, right? But it's mostly used as a noun, right? Um, I got new breaks for my car. Very good, very good. Excellent work, everyone, excellent. Okay, so next we have three different words that all sound the same but have different meanings, right? We have bye, 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 right? Bye, bye, bye. Okay, very good. So we have by as a verb, by as a noun, and then by as a preposition, okay? Bye, 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 all sound the same. So if I say it as a verb, I can say, I want to buy milk, right? The verb, to buy. Okay, I can say it as a noun. We just came to say bye, right? Like, goodbye, that means bye, okay? Or we can say she is by the river, right? Preposition, by the river. Very good, goodbye, right? Okay, so you can use that as a noun, goodbye. Excellent, I have to buy a car, right? That's, fair. That's, the, that's the verb, very good job, okay? So next we have course and course, okay? So we have C O. A-R-S-E as the adjective, course, and course as in the noun or the verb, right? So um, we can say it, it's usually a noun, right? Course, okay? So if we're using it as the adjective, C-O-A-R-S-E, we could say this shirt is coarse, and that means rough in texture, right? So like this shirt is soft, but if it was rough, I would say this shirt is coarse, okay? And then we have... I took an English course, right? That means class. That's the noun. That's an English course, the noun. Very good. Okay. So next we have then and then. Then and then. So we have then being, that can be a lot of things. It could be an adjective, a noun. It can be an adverb. Or then, which is a conjunction or a preposition. Okay. Then and then. Okay. So if I say, we are going to the store, then back home, right? Going to the store, then back home. Or we can say, he is taller than me, right? That's as, a, um, as an adjective, right? Then conjunction, right? Or preposition, then the store, taller than, as an adjective. Very good. Then we go watch the movie. Excellent. Very good. Okay. So let's look at there, there, and there, right? We get those all the time, there, there, and there. We have there, adjective, right? There being the possessive pronoun there. And we have there being a contraction of they are, okay? So there are three different types of theirs, okay? So let's look at them in a sentence real quick. So if I have, uh, 
We are staying at their house, right? Possessive, their house. Uh, the mop is in the corner over there, right? Right. So that's going to be the adjective there. Or we can say they're waiting for us. They are the contraction. They are good. I'll be there. Excellent. There is a lot of beautiful pictures. Very good job. There are restaurants. So um, very good. So uh, careful with that. There are right. There are restaurants. Remember, there are restaurants. Very good. Very good. Okay. So now two, two, and two. Okay. So we have two as in a preposition or an infinitive marker. We have two as in an adverb, or we have two as in the number. Okay. So as the preposition, they say, I want to see a concert. I want to see the concert. Well, this is as an infinitive marker, right? Two. Or let's go to the store. Good. Or we can have it as an adverb. I can't wait to see you too, meaning also. Okay, so as an adverb, T-O-O, -O, right? T-O-O -O means also. And then lastly, as a number, right? I will have two burgers. I'm very hungry. I'll have two burgers. Very good. Okay, and our last one, where versus where. Okay, so this we have W-E-A-R as the verb, and where, W-H-E-R-E, -E, as either an adverb or a conjunction. So let's take a look. So if I have the verb, I like to wear red. See? I like to wear red. Or where do you live? Where do you live? Right? And remember, live right, is one of our heteronyms, right? Where do you live? That means where are you from, right? Where do you live? Very good, very good. Okay, now let me pull this back to the center screen real quick. All right, thank you all so much for coming to our lesson. I know this was a little bit of a longer one, but I wanted to make sure we got through all of our examples, right? So we have 30 fun examples for you, right, of our homographs, heteronyms, or our homophones. So if you have missed anything in this lesson or you want to go back and watch it again um, and see any of the pronunciations or uh, just go through the lesson again, we will have this lesson on our Cambly Live YouTube channel. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to the Cambly Live, please do, or our Cambly YouTube channel in general. There are hundreds of videos um, all about English learning and uh, all of the uh, things that uh, we um, that you would like to learn about, right? And if you want some more one-on-one -on -one practice, uh, Cambly offers tutors um, available all day and all night um, that I can speak with you. Uh, they can work on any type of, from the beginning of uh, your journey through English and all the way through uh, if you're super advanced. There are plenty of uh, conversations and topics to have and tutors who are excited to have those conversations with you. Um, so if you uh, if you uh, are new to it, um, you can use Go Live, um, and that will be a, uh, a coupon that'll help you get 36% off. Um, so you can use Go Live for 36% off um, of a year long, up to a year long subscription. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me today for our homonyms. Remember, we have three types: homographs, heteronyms, and homophones. Just keep practicing and uh, you will definitely get it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great morning or afternoon or evening or wherever you are. Thank you so much.